J-E-L-L-O. Jell-O in those six delicious flavors, Jell-O puddings for old-fashioned homemade goodness bring you Baby Snooks. <laughs> Yes, it's the Baby Snooks Show, starring Fanny Bryce as Baby Snooks with Hanley Stafford as Daddy, Carmen Dragon and his orchestra, and yours truly, Harlow Wilcox. And brought to you each week by Jell-O and Jell-O Pudding. Well, I guess I don't have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that last night was Halloween. I don't know what you did, but here's what happened in the Higgins home. The family was just finishing dinner. Mommy, please, can I go? No, you may not. Snooks, I've told you a dozen times you can't go out tonight. But it's Halloween. I know it. <laughs> That's why you're staying home, so you can't get into any trouble. But all the kids will be out. Snooks. <laughs> you heard your mother. The subject is closed. Can we open it just a tiny little bit? <laughs> No. Tonight of all nights, I want to spend a quiet, restful evening. Why? Because there's a doctor coming over at 9 o'clock. He's going to examine me for insurance. Do you think he'll find any? <laughs> Very funny. More chocolate cake, Lancelot? No, thanks, dear. Not with the doctor coming. At my age, it doesn't pay to stuff myself. I want some chocolate cake. <laughs> Snooks, you've had three pieces. Do you really want some more? Yeah. At my age, it don't make any difference. <laughs> yes, I think I'll go in the other room and lie down. I've had a hard day, and I'd like to relax a little before the doctor gets here. Go ahead, dear, and I'll clear off the table. Oh, boy, that couch looks good. Daddy. What is it? If I promise to stay in front of the house... No, we... no. <laughs> now, please leave me alone. I'm going to take a nap. But it's Halloween outside. <laughs> it's Halloween inside, too. And you won't get into any trouble. Uh. Now, I want no further discussion on the subject. Yep, this couch was the best buy I ever made. <sighs> I could sleep for a week if my nerves had just let go. Hope it doesn't show up in my blood pressure. <sighs> Boo! Huh? Now, what's the big idea, Snooks? I put on my Halloween mask. Ain't it pretty? <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. Now, can't you go away and let me sleep? The doctor will be here in an hour. Perhaps you don't understand how important this is. Perhaps I don't. Well, it's not myself I'm doing it for. It's for you and the family. Insurance is protection. If anything happens to me, you'll get a lot of money. How much? Oh, maybe $10,000? Daddy. What? Can I have a dime in advance? No. You've already had your allowance this week. I'll give you the dime back, dear. When? When I get the $10,000. Snooks, I don't think you know what you're saying. You only collect insurance if something happens to the insured. What could happen? Why, hundreds of things. And there's a different type of policy to cover each one of them. Mm -hmm. Life, health, accident. Why, you could even insure a finger. My little finger? Why, yes. Suppose you lost your finger. <laughs> How can I lose it? It stuck on to me. <laughs> I didn't mean you'd leave it lying around somewhere. But suppose you accidentally cut off your finger. Yes. Yeah. What would happen? I could only count up to nine. No. You could collect on it. Let's say it's my finger. Yeah. If it should happen to get cut off, the company would pay a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars for your little finger? Yes, sir. Let's cut it off. Snokes, please go away and let me sleep. My blood pressure's bad enough. Can't the doctor fix it, Daddy? This doctor isn't coming here to fix things. He's coming here to look me over. Whatever he finds wrong, he'll report to his company. I don't like that doctor. Why not? He's a snitch. 
He's not a snitch. He is, though. He's a dirty old mean old dirty old snitch. Oh, Snooks, for the love of heaven, leave me alone. Go away. Mm, where? Anywhere. All right, I'll go outside. No, you don't. Go someplace else in the house. I'm trying to take a nap. I want to take a nap. Well, now, that's a good idea. Yeah. Suppose you run up to your bedroom and lie down. No, I want to lie next to you on the couch. You can't. <laughs> I want to lie next to you on the couch. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. I suppose it's the only way I can get some rest. Oh, well, come on. Lie here next to Daddy and go to sleep. All right. Good night, little Daddy. Good night. Daddy. Yes? I think I got insomnia. Well, just lie here quietly and don't disturb me. All right. Daddy. Oh, what is it? What's insomnia? <laughs> Listen, Snooks. If you can't fall asleep, count sheep. Little woolly sheep? Yes. With big brown eyes? Yes. I don't like sheep. <laughs> well, count kangaroos jumping over a fence. <laughs> I like kangaroos better. Oh, good. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-four, twenty-five. All right, let's have it. What happened to fourteen, nineteen, and twenty-three? <laughs> Settles it. Snooks, if I hear one more peep out of you, I'm gonna take my belt off. And you know what'll happen then? Mm-hmm. Your pants will fall down. <laughs> no. I'll give you a tanning, that's what. Now, either you let me take a nap or suffer the consequences. But, Dad. Not a sound. But, Dad. Now, you I heard just... me. Oh. Don't even open your mouth. I could get more rest in a <laughs> boiler factory. Oh, just to close my eyes for 15 minutes. Oh, for Pete's sake. I didn't do it. Well, go and see who it is. All right. Hi, Snook. Oh, hello, Phoebe. Can you come out for Halloween? Shh, not so loud, Phoebe. My daddy's asleep on the sofa. But all the kids are outside. Why don't you ask him? I did ask him. He won't let me. Shall I ask him? No, you'll wake him up. Can't you see he's asleep? Well, what's he doing sleeping so early? He's waiting for a man to come and see him. About what? About cutting off his little finger. <laughs> Gee, he don't snore like my daddy does. Oh, sometimes he snores. Sometimes he even whistles. Does he talk in his sleep, too? Yeah. <laughs> does yours? No, that's what makes my mother so mad. He just mumbles. <laughs> Poor, tired little daddy. Don't he look pretty sleeping on a couch? Yeah, I guess we better not wake him up. No, I wouldn't wake him up. I wouldn't wake him up for anything in the whole world. Oh, for goodness sake! I give up. Did you have a nice little rest, Daddy? Great. With you two kids jabbering in my ears. Phoebe wanted me to wake you up, but I wouldn't do it. I just wanted to know if Snooks would come out, Mr. Higgins. It's Halloween. And all right, all right, go ahead. Shoo, both of you. Get out of the house. Come on, Snooks, before he changes his mind. All right. Bye, Daddy. I should have done that an hour ago. Maybe I'd have gotten some rest. Now I'm so wide awake, my nerves are screaming. Lancelot, was that you yelling? Yes. My defense has just collapsed. I held out as long as I could, but I'm only human. What do you mean? I let Snooks go out. Oh, well, it is Halloween, after all. Maybe it's for the best. It's not for the best. Every Halloween is the same thing. Life and property aren't worth two cents with those kids chasing around the streets. What do you plan to do about it? Eliminate the holiday? No, but I can teach our daughter a lesson. You see this mask I'm wearing? Oh, I hadn't noticed. <laughs> Great. Well, maybe the mask isn't so bad, but when I put on these false tusks... <gasps> oh, Lancelot, that's horrible. <laughs> Pretty frightening, isn't it? Well, you wait here. I'll be back in ten minutes. Where are you going? Out to teach those kids a lesson. I'll give them such a scare, they'll never want to go out on Halloween again. Come on, Snooks. Whose doorbell?
Let's say we ring first. Let's ring this one right here. Okay, put on your mask and I'll sit on my broom. Go ahead, ring it. I did. Someone's coming. Trick or treat, trick or treat. Well, well, if it isn't two little goblins on my doorstep. How, Mr. Wilcox? What's this trick or treat business? Well, you gotta treat us to something or we'll play a trick on you. Yeah. You know, I sort of suspected this might happen tonight, so I've got a treat all ready for you. Come on inside. Here it is, kids. Right on the table. Oh, boy, I'm yellow. With cream. A <laughs> little pieces of fruit inside. Ah, that's a jello Halloween special. <laughs> Snooks, that looks like a dish of sunshine all dressed up, doesn't it? And just taste that wonderful flavor. But hey, don't eat so fast. That's the famous locked in jello flavor, you know. Sealed in by a special process, so it's safe and sound till your first big spoonful. Makes you think of the real ripe fruit, doesn't it? You know, I can't think of a thing I like better than a dish of jello. Can you? Yeah, another dish. Well, I'm afraid that'll have to do for now. When the sugar shortage is over and there's lots of jello again, you come around and I'll give you each six dishes. One of each of the six delicious jello flavors strawberry, raspberry, cherry, orange, lemon, and lime. How's that? Oh, boy. And now, if you two goblins have finished goblin, just put a mark on my door and leave me alone for the rest of the night, eh? Uh, thank you, Mr. Wilcox. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, kids. Happy Halloween. Well, who's next? Let's try the house on the corner. Okay, come on. Hello, Snooks. Hiya, Phoebe. Who are you? It's me, Roger. Oh. <laughs> you didn't recognize me with this pumpkin on my head, did you? <laughs> Gee, is that a real pumpkin? Sure. Ain't it uncomfortable? Well, it was a little warm at first, but it's better now that I put the candles out. <laughs> hey, come on, let's go down to the drugstore and see what we can get. Yeah. Well. Uh-oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? I saw something move behind that tree. It looks like a man. No, it's an animal. It's got big, long teeth sticking out of its mouth. Oh, I'm scared. Here he comes. Move for your life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Little children should be home in bed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, that ought to teach them. Hey, what's the big idea, bud? Huh? Haven't you got anything better to do than to go around scaring kids? Look, friend, I suggest you mind your own business. One of those kids happens to be my daughter. Well, one of those kids happens to be my son. And I don't like any overgrown ape with false tusks running around scaring him. I did it for their own good. Every Halloween, those kids go out and get into trouble. Besides, I don't like your attitude. Oh, you don't, huh? No. Say that again. I don't like your attitude. No. <laughs> Next time, try scaring somebody your own size. So long. Oh, what's this? Ah, my teeth! Oh, they're the false ones. <laughs> I tripped and fell down. Gee, that's funny. Now, what's funny about it? You must have tripped just when that man hit you. You tell me something. Who was that man? That was Mr. Hopkins, Roger's father. Well, where does he live? Right down the corner. Why? Never mind. Come on. Any man who punches your father does so at his own risk. Why didn't you sock him back? Because I've got a brain in my head, that's why. Suppose I did punch him back. With the tremendous power I generate, I could easily have broken my hand. Nine chances out of ten, the hand wouldn't have healed straight. Mm -hmm. And there I am, faced with the prospect of never playing the piano again. Oh, but Daddy. What? You don't know how to play the piano. <laughs> Mind your own business. Pick up that rock. All right, here. What are you writing? Oh, just a little note. A little note? Yes. I'm going to throw a scare into that bully. Now, do you see that window in Hopkins' living room? Mm -hmm. The one that's open? Yeah. Well, I take the rock, thusly, mm -hmm. and I attach the note with a rubber band, thusly. And I draw back my arm, thusly, and with uncanny accuracy, I toss it through the open living room window. Thusly. <laughs> yes, my aim isn't what it used to be. Come on, let's get home. Thank you. 
Don't say anything about it to your mother. Well, come on, we'll just sit in the living room as though nothing happened. What did it say, Daddy? What? The note you tied to the rock. Oh, I just thought I'd worry him a bit. He won't figure that one out in a hurry. All the note said was, guess who? <laughs> That's a good one, Daddy. <laughs> yes, was well, pretty clever. What was that? It's a rock. It came through the window, and there's a note on it. What does the note say? It says, who? Aha! Uh -huh. Wants to play, does he? Well, two can play at this game. Can three play? Yes, come on. Lancelot, what happened? What was the... Good heavens, who broke our window? Vandals, Vera. Irresponsible hoodlums. A law-abiding citizen like me hasn't a chance on Halloween. Where are you going? Out to chase him away. Let's go, Snooks. <laughs> Quiet, Snooks. Inch your way forward a little. Daddy. What? I'm tired of crawling on my stomach. This is the way they do it in the army. If you don't want to be seen, you crawl forward on your stomach. Yeah, but not down the middle of the sidewalk. <laughs> the idea is that we don't want him to see us from the house. What are we going to do? I don't know yet. Oh, wait. I've got it. You see this gate here? Mm-hmm. See the garage over there? Yeah. Well, if Mr. Hopkins wants to use this gate tomorrow morning, he's going to have to climb up on the garage to do it. You're so smart, Daddy. You can say that again. You're so smart. Never mind, never mind. Let's go to work. <laughs> Home, sweet home. Gee, that gate looked funny up on top of the garage. <laughs> yes, it did, didn't it? <laughs> but I don't want you to get the wrong idea from all this. Mm -hmm. Certain things are merely mischievous pranks. Others have a purpose behind them. Understand? No. Well, let's put it this way. Your daddy has never been a believer in a policy of appeasement. Neither have I. Oh, that's the way I like to hear you talk. What does appeasement mean? Well, when someone strikes you and you don't strike back, that's appeasement. How do you like that? What? I've been appeasing you and Mommy for years. Well, off to bed with you, Snooks. After the gate episode, I don't think we're going to hear from Mr. Hopkins again tonight. I want to stay up and see what else next happens. Rest your pretty little head. My pretty little head? Well, your little head. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen next. Our friend, Mr. Hopkins, has shot his bolt. Hmm. Did you hear something, Snooks? Yeah. What was it? I don't know. The windows seem to be okay. Yeah. Oh, that must be the doctor. Go answer the door, Snooks. All right. Can't answer the door, Daddy. Oh, why not? What? No door? It's gone. That does it. He wants trouble. All right, he'll get all he's looking for. I got it. A brilliant idea. Run into the kitchen, Snooks, and get some hamburger, a pail of water, and your mother's flat iron. What do you want with him? Now, don't ask questions. Just get them. All right. Now, before I pay a visit to Mr. Hopkins, I'm going to prepare a little reception for him in case he returns. First, this rope stretched across the front stoop, up over the trellis. Hurry up, Snooks. I'm coming, Daddy. And now another rope stretched this way. Here you are, Daddy. Oh, thanks, Snooks. Now I just put the flat iron up here, and the bucket of water goes up on this side. Get the fiendish ingenuity of it? No. Well, if an unexpected visitor, say Mr. Hopkins, walks across this side of the porch, he gets the flat iron on his noggin. On the other hand, if he trips the rope on this side, he gets a refreshing bath of aqua pura. Who gets the hamburger? I think this hamburger will interest some of the many dogs in our neighborhood. To arms, Snooks. The Higginses ride again. Yeah, let's go to the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, quit patting them. Just keep dangling that hamburger. And stop nibbling at it. Can I have a little taste? Well, what do you want to eat raw hamburger for? I just want to find out what they see in it. You'll find out when we toss it through Hopkins' front door. Now, come on, there's the house. Now, here's the strategy, Snooks. One of us knocks on the door. When the door opens, the other one throws the meat inside. The dogs follow the meat, and Hopkins' living room becomes a bedlam. You got it? Uh-huh. We throw the meat inside. That's right. And Hopkins' living room becomes a bedroom. Not bedroom, bedlam. What's a bedlam? Never mind. Go up and knock on that door. All right. Now run, Snooks. Here you are, Hopkins. Some groceries. <laughs> that there never was a youngster yet, including the contrary snooks, who didn't go for the flavor of butterscotch. And when it's Jell-O butterscotch pudding, well, mothers get set to serve seconds. For Jell-O butterscotch pudding has such a buttery brown sugar taste, such a rich mellow flavor, a creamy smoothness that's just plain melt-in-the-mouth goodness. It's a real old-fashioned homey flavor, but made a quick new-fashioned way. Jell-O butterscotch pudding cooks to velvety perfection in just about five minutes. And it's nourishing, made with milk. A grand dessert for the youngsters. Then there's Jell-O vanilla pudding, rich tasting and distinctive. And there's Jell-O chocolate pudding with that swell, chocolatey goodness. A little hard to get these days, but a wonderful treat when you do get it. And take whatever flavor your grocer has. For all three Jell-O puddings are so good. They're just like grandma's, only more so. And now back to Halloween in the Higgins home. Mummy is on the telephone. What's that, Mrs. Hopkins? Oh, but that doesn't sound possible. You mean you were sitting in your living room minding your own business and my husband threw a pound of raw hamburger in your face? Oh, really, Mrs. Hopkins, my husband wouldn't do a thing like that. Well, it's probably just another Halloween prank. Well, I don't know what you're complaining about. You should see my house. Windows broken, the front door gone, and the door... <laughs> Good heavens, I've got to hang out, Mrs. Hopkins. A strange man just staggered in here and fell unconscious at my feet. Oh, get me a doctor. Who are you? I'm the doctor. <laughs> the insurance doctor. You poor man, what happened? Somebody hit me with a flat iron. Oh, dear. Oh, here comes my husband. He'll help you. Oh, what's the trouble, Vera? What happened, Mummy? Oh, Lancelot, this poor man is the insurance doctor. Somebody hit him with a flat iron. A flat iron? Shocking. Oh, Daddy, that must have been the iron. Uh, Snooks, run into the kitchen and get the doctor a glass of water. All right. Oh, my head. <laughs> okay, Doctor. Up we go. <laughs> On your feet. Uh -huh. hey, how do you feel now? A little wobbly, thanks, but I guess I'll be all right. Are you Mr. Higgins? Yes. Would you prefer to skip the examination for tonight? No, as long as I'm here, I might as well get it over with. I'll get my bag. It's out in the car. Oh, fine. Oh, Doctor, look out for... <laughs> oh, the poor man. Lancelot, who put that water bucket up there? Vandals. Daddy! Daddy! Get out of the way, Snooks. I've got to drag the doctor back in. <laughs> oh, how do you feel, old man? Oh, my head. What's going on here? Here, drink some water. Give me that glass of water, Snooks. I didn't get it. Didn't get it? I told you to bring a glass of water for the doctor. Why didn't you get it? I was scared. Now, what could you possibly be scared of? There's a horse in the kitchen. A horse? Yeah. Ridiculous. What would a horse be doing in the kitchen? Eating the cake. <laughs> Good heavens, there is a horse in the kitchen. Not anymore. He's coming right in here. Stand back, everybody. <laughs> Look out, Doctor. The horse is going to step on you. <coughs> he did step on him. Oh, the poor man. I hope he carries insurance. <laughs> uh, He's gone. Out the front door. Are you... Are you all right, Doctor? 
Let me help you out. Oh, what a house. Help me to my car. I want to go home. Oh, sure, Doctor. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> Oh, what hit him? A rocket just came through the window. Oh, another one, eh? And there's a note attached to it. What does it say? It says, thanks for the dogs. Here's a horse on you. Why, that low down. Lance, Dirt. what is this all about? What's going on here tonight? I'll explain it to you later, Vera. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's work to be done. Come on, Snooks. All right. What are we going to do with this? Daddy. This time he gets the works. It's a little trick I learned in college called the sunken living room. <laughs> it's fiendish in its simplicity. I merely climb a tree beside his house and drop the end of a garden hose down his chimney. And I turn it on? You guessed it. <laughs> Unless there's a fire. There is a fire, all right. Mr. Hopkins is building it in his fireplace. Ah, oh, in a couple of days. Yeah, as soon as they take the stitches out. <laughs> what? Oh, I'd love to come over and go waiting in your living room. <laughs> but I can't leave the house. My daddy won't let me. I don't understand it. But he says every time he lets me out of his sight, I get into trouble. <laughs> Ain't daddy funny? <laughs> Well, Snooks has done it again. She's really wonderful. And we hope you'll be with us next week when Snooks gets going in another of her amazing adventures. Until then, remember Jell-O and Jell-O puddings. Snooks, uh, what do you say about Jell-O? Just a taste of Jell-O puddings. Or of Jell-O, and you know, it's the one and only J-E-L-L-O. <laughs> I like it. Happy, healthy dogs speak for Gaines, Gaines' complete meal. Contains everything dogs are known to need, many things meat alone cannot provide. Yes, make Gaines the main part of every feeding to be sure you nourish every inch of your dog. And it's more economical than any other type of dog food. Let your dog speak. <coughs> speak for Gaines, <coughs> America's largest selling dog food. Be sure to listen to The Thin Man, which follows in just one minute. Heard in tonight's Baby Snooks show, starring Fanny Bryce as Snooks and Hanley Stafford as Daddy, were Arlene Harris, Ben Alexander, Frank Nelson, Georgia Ellis, Sarah Berner, and Robert Bentz. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking.
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>